Hey guys, welcome to Strong with Raj. No nonsense strength training. Why am I in a squat position? Is that because this is an intro for my video, which is called Squat Talk. I have another channel called Squat Talk, but I'm bringing all the videos to my main channel, Strong with Raj. The basic idea is that I will make a video and speak to you guys in a squat position. And I'm hoping and requesting that you will also listen and watch the video in a squat position. There could be anywhere from two to four to maybe eight minutes. This will ensure that I am in a squat position on a regular basis, maybe daily. And also it can help you if you want to be able to go back to the roots and be comfortable in taking a position of squat. As you know, I'm big into strength training, big into back squats, deadlifts and other things. But this particular playlist is just about being able to be in a squat position like we always have been and maybe restart and recreate that habit that we've forgotten to be in a squat position. So without any further ado, let's get into it. What are these? Well, these are my props for today's video. As my title says, ankle mobility is bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. Ankle mobility exercises, drills, bullshit. At least when it comes to squat. I've had so many clients, friends and colleagues tell me that they can't squat or they can't go deep enough because of their ankle mobility. And most of the time I just listen to them. Uh, if they are my client, I get them to do none of those ankle mobility drill and they are able to squat. But when it's my friends and colleagues, I just say, hmm, okay, whatever. So in this video, I am going to bust this myth once forever because I have I've had enough of it. For some reason, I think in early 2000s uh, when CrossFit was on the rise, we I don't know if you guys uh, have observed physiotherapists, uh, exercise physiologist type of people entered the fitness industry. And I'm a trainer, I'm a strength coach, and my knowledge is very limited. But these people brought in these concepts of mobility drills, your supple leopard and all the crap. You know, it's unnecessary. And I think these people are compelled to enlighten us with these terms, which means nothing, at least to me. Ankle mobility drill, it's nothing when it comes to ability to squat. Maybe for a runner, maybe for a swimmer, for Olympic weightlifter, because they do the whole dorsiflexion. Sorry, dorsiflexion. So it's almost a mind parasite. We have been uh, hijacked by these mind parasites in one way or other. Terms like superfood, anabolic window, and I can go on and on. Anyway, I'm going to get up and do a demonstration because I think it's best I do things, show it to you what I mean. All right. <sighs> Believe it or not, this position that I'm in facing forward, palms facing forward is called anatomical position. Just watch my foot. I'll just turn aside. If you watch my foot and then the ankle and then the shin, it is in a right angle. When you're standing, it is right angle. Natural and normal, it is not hurting. Uh, 90 degrees. So it is a 90 degrees and right angle. Now, this is plantar flexion, pointing your toes to the floor and your toe going away from your shin, the angle becoming bigger. Plantar meaning planting, so it's easy to remember. Plantar flexion, plantar flexion. The opposite of is dorsiflexion, where the toe is coming close to your shin and the angle is smaller. So this is the right angle, perfect. 90 degrees, angle becomes bigger, you know, it goes closer to, I don't know, 140, 130, and dorsiflexion, the angles become shorter. We're going to focus on that angle, dorsiflexion, when we talk about squat and those unnecessary mobility drills. Now, when we squat, what happens mostly, the two joints that work is knees and hips, okay? I want you to think of two angles here, hip angle and the knee angle. In the squat position at the bottom, 
the tummy comes close to the thigh. That is your hip angle becoming smaller. Right now they're away from each other, 90 degrees. And knee angle, not the front knee, look at the back. The back of the thigh, the hamstring area, the posterior comes close to the calves. They also get shorter and smaller. So there it is. Hip angle coming close, knee angle close. Now, when we talk of the ankle angle, they also have come close. It's about, I don't want to put any number, but it's smaller than 90 degrees, which is an acute angle. Not cute, acute. It's an acute angle. Now, when you are not used to squatting, these people who are assessing, you will say, oh, you need to do some mobility drill. In a squat, your ankle is not doing much. The movement are done by hips and knees. All what it is, is that you have not been squatting much or have been in that position enough. Now look at that angle. It's, my shins are very close to my foot and I haven't done any ankle mobility drill. None of those bands wrapped around my knee and walking like funny in the gym. When I see that while I'm doing my squats and then they do their squat, I think it's such a waste of time. There's no need. All you have to do is squat more often. That's all it is in whatever capacity you can and stop wasting your time in ankle mobility drills. Mobility test was once a thing done by doctors for old people who were not able to move. That what, that's what mobility is, ability to move from A to B, which is walking. And if they could not, they get a wheelie walker or some sort of aid. Mobility for your joints as per, you, you literally don't need much drills. You just, if it is about your hips and knees and ankle, you just need to squat. Specificity comes later on when for a certain sport you need to move a certain way. Like a ballet dancer has to really extend her ankle like that. I'm, I can't do it. Then yes, you can do all sorts of drill. And if you can't squat all the way down like me, you can just sit like this, get used to it. See, my ankle are not so loaded right now. The angle is still shorter. And as I remove this, my ankles are loaded. Now, to keep your ankle supporting your body, there's like only three muscles, major three muscles, which are working. And of course, they are not working often enough because you are not in a squat position often enough. That is all it is. Now I'm going to throw you a word, a term, which is very simple because I do my best to keep things simple. It's called habituation. Very simple, habituation. Whatever you do becomes your habit. And that's all it is. No mobility drills. You just need to be in the habit of doing this often. So just do it once a day for five minutes like I do. Do it three, four times. Hold on to something, get a support. Now, the next part is for those who actually do squats in the gym. Back squat, for instance front squat where they put a certain weight on their back and squat and if they are complaining that they need ankle mobility no they need a squat shoe just like you need shoes to play basketball to play golf can you believe it and football you can use a squat shoe now this is the first time I'm doing in from the camera where I'm going to demonstrate how squat shoe helps you get into the bottom position. And it is not cheating. For those uh, morality police out there in fitness, it is not cheating. It is an aid. Great lifters wear them. They're very cheap. So these are the squat shoes. And I squat down and I can tell you it's much more comfortable. The angle of my ankle is slightly lesser. Before without the, the shoe, it was right here and can start hurting after a while. I'm not suggesting you that you stay in the squat position for too long either. Five minutes is more than enough. So from the side, 
if you push your knees out, now we're talking more about a back squat position. Before it was like just a relaxed position. If you push your hips slightly out, knees out, then the angle is lesser. What is happening here is a squat shoe has a very hard sole. I will show you the shoe. Squat shoe is one of the best thing you can do to be able to do a back squat or a front squat or overhead squat. This sole is incompressible. That's the main part of it. When we squat with sneakers and shoes or without shoes, our sole, our actual sole of the foot compresses. This one doesn't. It's made of the material. They, they used to be made of wood as well in, in, the, in the beginning of the squat shoe. But yeah, and it has a gradient. It doesn't just drop. So what this does is gives you heel support. It supports your heel. And when your butt is down, it is not all the way down. And when it's not all the way down, as in, you know, right past your grass, then your ankle angle is not so cute. It is not so far forward, it's slightly backwards. So you can use squat shoes for lifting or just to get better in this position if you feel like before your squatting session. Or you can use this more so that you can watch my videos and enjoy these talks. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe. And I really hope I haven't offended anyone, but I don't really care. Uh, but I hope that I have made some people aware that you can squat just like me without doing any fancy ankle mobility drill. I'll see you next time.